horrible weather. I hate it when it rains. So what are we going to do today? It's a perfect day for tidying up. I enjoy putting the house in order when the weather is bad. Um, by the way, look at the mess. We don't often get a chance to clean up together. You're joking, right? I hate cleaning the house. Don't you have any better ideas, Anne? Just a little bit of tidying up. Anyway, it was just an idea. And not a bad idea at that, <laughs> in my opinion. Sorry, that idea is bad. What else do you suggest? Personally, I enjoy doing something more exciting than vacuuming and doing the dusting. Why don't we play a game? What kind of game? How about playing cards? No, I hate playing cards. It's so boring. Let's see what's on TV. Hmm. Cartoons, soap operas, political talk shows. There's nothing interesting on. Shall we go for a walk? I like walking in the rain. Why don't we take a walk to the new bakery in Piccadilly? What do you say? Are you crazy? It's raining out. Well, you know what the traffic's like when it rains. I certainly don't want to get stuck in a traffic jam on a Sunday. That happens every day when I drive to work and when I drive back home. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what shall we do? If you want, I can read your fortunes using the tarot cards. Aren't you interested in what the future holds? That's your favorite hobby. No thanks, Alice. Let's not think about the future. I prefer the future to remain a mystery. Well, I prefer to be prepared if something is going to happen. I don't like surprises. So, sit here. I'll tell you who you are and what your future holds. You know what I like to do on days like this? Nothing. Totally relaxing, doing nothing. I agree with you, Jack. Total relaxation. Now that's a great idea. And maybe eating something nice and tasty. Huh, Anne? Why don't you prepare us one of your lovely lunches? No way, guys. You don't want to go out. You hate cleaning the house. You don't like playing games. So, in other words, you want to do nothing while I have to cook. And do you know what I say? I also enjoy doing nothing. That's what I'm going to do. Watch out, couch. Here I come. <laughs> See, you are very shy and sweet-tempered, yet you are somewhat moody, and sometimes it seems you prefer to stay by yourself. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes I enjoy solitude, just me and my thoughts. Yes, indeed. I see that you are worried about something. That's not clear. I think it has something to do with a boy. Or... Or? Or maybe it has something to do with your job. Yes. Maybe you are going to get a new job. Wow. Definitely I like the second option. It's much better. <sighs> But I don't know. Actually... 
This card means that love troubles are on their way. Sorry, Peter, but I see the shadow of another boy in your Sharon's heart. Don't be silly, Alice. Tell me more about this job instead. Okay, if you like. So you are very careful in your work, even if it seems you don't like it that much. Yeah, that's right. I like doing things right. If I can't work well, I prefer doing nothing at all. What's more, I'm very punctual. I hate being late. Yes, and you are also very modest. Thanks, Alice. Well, actually, I can't stand people who show off. They make me uneasy. Your tarot cards seem to know me very well. Well, you know, tarot cards never lie. That's why I want to investigate more about this mysterious boy. Come on, darling, they don't, they're not always right, are they? Yes, they are. I swear it. They always tell the truth. Oh, come on, girls. Stop it. How can you spend the whole afternoon talking nonsense? Why don't we do something more interesting? Why don't we all stop doing nothing and, and go out? Look, it has just stopped raining. How about strolling in the park? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let, let's go. Hello, this is Anne Baxter from Red Bear Publishing. I'm looking for accommodation for an American writer and his agent. They're coming to London in two weeks' time. Um, could you tell me a little bit about your hotel, please? Um, our, our clients are used to the very best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. And um, mm. do you also have a swimming pool? Uh, a, a sauna? Great. Um, and as far as entertainment is concerned, do you have a lounge with live music? Could you hold a moment, please? Sharon, stop humming, please. I can't hear anything. <clears throat> um, OK, well, uh, thank you very much for your help. I'll let you know as soon as possible. Right. Goodbye. What are you doing, Anne? My boss asked me to book rooms for two of our most demanding clients. They would like a quiet hotel near our publishing house. Oh, and of course, with all the creature comforts. So I'm making a few telephone calls. And listen to this song for a moment. It's Ray Charles's last recording. It's fantastic. I've got a lot to do, Sharon. Just for one minute, Anne. Come on. I'm afraid I can't now. But just why don't you go over to Alice's? She's having a shower. You know, when Alice gets in the bathroom, she takes at least two hours. 
Well, do whatever you want. Just please get out of this room. Anne, what's the matter today? Why are you treating me so badly? That's enough, Sharon. I know everything about it. Everything about what? That you've got a lover. A lover? Are you going crazy, Anne? Oh, don't try and pretend with me, Sharon. And I call you a friend. But it's the truth. Uh huh. And who is my romantic lover, by the way? You know. I'm talking about Jack. Jack? What are you talking about? The photograph. The one where you and Jack are kissing. It's not what you think, Anne. Uh huh. So you tell me. You know, a picture says more than a thousand words. That photo is from three years ago. We were engaged. Or oh, what? But you and Jack were engaged. I know. I know. I, I wanted to avoid stupid gossip. And also because of Peter. So now you're telling me that... Well, I can't believe it. I know. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. See, now you're angry with me. That's why. Well, you're right, Sharon. I am mad at you. And now I look like a fool. I'm sorry, Anne, really. No, my hair! What's going oh on? God, it's Alice. No. Come on, let's go oh, see what's happening. Alice. yesterday evening. I'm listening to his story and I don't realise that time flies. More than an hour. It's always the same old story, Alice. <laughs> Anyways, green suits you. <laughs> you look, it looks very original. <laughs> very unique. Mm -hmm. Just like you. <laughs> Well, Alice, <laughs> don't be offended, but um, you look like uh, a frog. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. That's the nicest compliment. <laughs> what shall I do? <laughs> well, why don't you call a hairdresser <laughs> and make an appointment? Um, and in future, try to avoid changing your look. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Can I ask you a question? Yesterday evening, I got... Sorry, Jack, I can't listen now. I've got to get to work. I have a meeting at 9.30 with my editor. And I'm late. But I only need a minute. It's important. Nothing is more important than this meeting. If I arrive late, my boss will kill me. Ring me later if you want. Bye-bye. Great. Alice. Alice. Can I ask you a question? Yesterday evening... No, Jack, I can't. I'm really sorry, but I 
have to get going too. But you never leave before 11 in the morning. Why are you in such a hurry today? I'm starting a new yoga course this morning. My horoscope says I have to do some exercise. <laughs> well, if your horoscope says so. Anyway, I only need a second. No, Jack. My teacher told me not to be late. You can give me a call later. But Alice, wait. It's important. What a bunch of nuts. I wonder what my aunt will think. What a day. I'm exhausted. Me too. All of my muscles are killing me. What is there to eat, Anne? Well, we can make a sandwich. That's about it. The fridge is practically empty. Jack, is that you? Who's that with him? Hi, everybody. This is my Aunt Carolina. She came all the way from Bologna to see me. She'd like to see how I'm getting along. Well, good evening. Jack, why didn't you say anything? I should... Clean up! Look at the mess! Well, everybody was in such a hurry this morning. I tried to telephone you, but your mobile was off. And Alice's mobile just rang and rang. I imagine you left it at home again as usual, Alice. Well, I guess so. Good evening. It's a pleasure to meet you. Mm. Well, well. Only girls, eh? <laughs> so... You are Alice. Alice, the interesting one of the house. And you are Anne, the housekeeper. <laughs> Please, Anne Carolina. <laughs> so that's how you describe us. Come on. Anne Carolina is only joking, right? <laughs> and this is the wonderful house. <laughs> um, well, yes. But it's usually tidy. <laughs> It's still very charming. Oh, thank you. Well, um, may I offer you something? Um, would you like to have a glass of wine, maybe? Yes, thank you, I would. Oh. Alice, could you get a bottle of wine, please? There isn't any wine. And there isn't any wine. There isn't any beer. We have to do the shopping. Oh, uh, well, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> uh, it's not usually like this, but... Today was very busy. Do you know what? Let's go out for dinner. Oh. What do you say, Aunt Carolina? That sounds good to me. Excuse me. Do you go out dressed like that? Maybe you should get cleaned up a bit. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Let's get ready to go out on the mm -hmm. town. May I ask you a question, Jack? Well, of course, Aunt Carolina. Shoot. Do you really think it's such a good idea to live together with all these women? <laughs> Alice, what are you going to do today? I don't know. Why? Well, I'm going to do some shopping for this evening. Would you like to come along? I'd like to make dinner for Jack's aunt. I also want to invite um, Sharon and Peter. My lesson is at three. I don't know what time I'll finish. Well, don't worry. I'm going to do some work before that. I don't think I'll finish before five. So, what do you say? OK. But only if you loan me your red hat. OK, I'll lend you the hat. But be careful. If you lose it, I'll get very angry. Good morning, everyone. Oh, good morning, good morning Mrs. Andreini. What are you talking about? We're deciding what we're going to do today. How are you going to spend your day? I think I'll go for a walk in the city centre. Maybe do a little shopping. 
Oh, I think it's going to rain. Just look at those clouds. Hi, guys. Hi, Auntie. Good morning. I'm on my way out. Jack, aren't you going to have breakfast? Oh, I can't, Auntie. I'm meeting a Japanese client. If I get there late, my boss will have a fit. You can't go on an empty stomach. Oh, don't worry. I'll have something to eat at lunch. Oh, wait, Jack. I'll come with you. So, we'll see each other at five. Don't forget. <laughs> I'm worried about Jack. He's so thin. Maybe he isn't eating enough. Oh, he won't starve if he misses breakfast. He seems so run down and so distracted. He's always thinking about something else. Maybe he's in love. Excuse me a moment. I'll get that. <laughs> This is Jack's aunt, Carolina. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Sharon Evans. I live next door. Another woman. And very pretty, I might add. Let me guess. You're Jack's friend, too. Who knows why my nephew prefers female friends? Excuse me, I have to go. Sharon, why don't you stay? We can get to know each other better. Sharon, I'm a little worried about Jack. He's so distracted these days. Maybe there's something you know I don't. Me? I don't know anything, really. It's strange. I know his work is going very well. Maybe... There's a woman in the picture. Listen, I'm very sorry. As I told you, I don't know anything about it. Now, I really must get going. OK, OK. What's the matter, Sharon? You look a little upset. I'm fine. Just, just a little tired, that's all. Listen, Sharon, you seem like such a nice girl. May I ask you a favour? Certainly. Go right ahead. You know I'm going to leave in a few days. When I leave, will you take care of Jack? It would make me feel so much better. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. Do I not? I'm not really the right person. And I'm also engaged to Peter. We live together. Engaged. That's strange. Why do you say that? Because love is joyful, my girl. And you seem, well, you seem so unhappy. Hello, Anne. You're very beautiful this evening. Come on. Would you like a nice big kiss? <laughs> But, Peter, are you crazy? What's the special occasion? I'm so happy. I'm elated. But you're never like this. What's happened? Do you remember that famous director who was at my performance? What did he look like? You know, that tall, well-dressed man, about 50 years old. He looked like Clark Gable. Oh, yes. Now I remember. Well, he said he wanted to direct a musical in Japan. Yes, and? But so what? 
and he said he wanted me to do an audition. <laughs> yes? But I can't stand the suspense. What about him? Well, today, I auditioned. And listen to this, Anne. He wants me to go with him to Japan. Oh, congratulations, Peter! That's fantastic! I'm, I'm so happy for you. Oh, now, tell me everything. What was the audition like? I was very nervous. At first, he asked me to sing. And then he asked me to act like a snob. You know, they're putting on My Fair Lady, and they're looking for an actor to play the professor of pronunciation. Remember, this professor transforms a simple flower girl into a high society star. Oh, wow! A leading role! You are perfect for the part. But you like wearing fancy scarves. You enjoy using a superior tone of voice. And Are you going to move? To Japan? Of course. I'm so excited about the idea of living there. I wonder what it will be like. What does Sharon think about all this? Well, she doesn't know yet. You know, she's so moody. Mm. I need to find the right words. Anyways, all I can think about now is celebrating. <laughs> Do you want to go dancing? But you hate dancing, Peter. I know. But I want to be crazy tonight. Put on your best dress. I want you to look like Sophia Loren. Oh. <laughs> hey, what's happening here? You're kissing each other. Alice, now hold on. I'm leaving for Japan. For Japan? What are you going to do in Japan? I'm going to act in a great musical. My Fair Lady. That's amazing. And when are you going to leave? I don't really know yet. I think we're going to leave in two or three weeks, at the most. And what does Sharon think about this? Sharon? Sharon? All you want to know about is Sharon. I imagine she'll be very pleased to come with me. At any rate, it's time to party. <laughs> we're going dancing. Would you like to join us? Dancing? Why aren't you always like this? Going to Japan is making you much more fun. Hi, everybody. Wow. I'm really pleased to see everyone dressing up like this for me. <laughs> ha ha. You'd like to be the center of attention, wouldn't you? Well, of course. And that color really suits you. And Alice, made up like that, you look much older. What's happening anyway? Why are you all so elegant? Did I forget something? No, Jack. We're going out to celebrate with Peter. He's going to play a role in a musical. And he's moving to Japan. To Japan? <laughs> what does Sharon think about all this? She doesn't know. Anyway, according to Peter, she'll be ecstatic about the idea of moving to Japan. Moving to Japan? <laughs> what does Sharon have to do with Peter's musical, anyway? Well, you know how it is, Jack. When two people are together, they make changes together. And anyway, why do you care if Peter and Sharon move to Japan? Oh, I don't care. But I really don't think that Sharon is going to be happy about moving to Japan. That's what you think. Well, of course, I could be wrong. In any case, it's useless to make guesses. Hey, Jack, do you want to come with us? Not really. Tell Peter I'm sorry, but I don't really feel like celebrating tonight. Well... You don't know what you're missing. Sayonara, Jack. Yes, sure. Okay, four o'clock is fine. I'll see you later. Bye. 
Who are you speaking to, Sharon? To the museum I sent my CV to. I'm going to have an interview this afternoon. Ah, oh, great. But I really don't understand why you're in such a rush to find a job. You know very well I don't enjoy being a tour guide. Now, let's get back to us. Where were you last night? You didn't get home until three in the morning. I was out with Anne and Alice. Listen, Sharon, I have to tell you something very important. What's the matter, Peter? Is something wrong? Well, not really wrong, but... Yesterday, remember when I was waiting for you outside the gym? You saw that director, didn't you? The one who wants to put on a musical in Japan? Yes, that's the one. Well, he asked me to audition. And? Well, we had a meeting, and the audition went very well. It's a shame you weren't there. I was fantastic. Let me tell you what happened. Firstly, when I arrived, they were rehearsing the first scene of My Fair Lady. A girl was selling flowers in the street, and people were passing by without noticing her. Two men were watching the scene, laughing all the while. Then I sat down because I didn't want to interrupt anything. After that, all of a sudden, the director noticed me. He called out to me and asked me to play one of the roles. And here comes the best part. Finally, while I was singing, he interrupted me and he shouted, Great, my boy! The part is yours! Can you believe it, Sharon? I got the leading part. I'm really happy for you, Peter. You should be happy for both of us. Why is that? Because we're going to leave for Japan in two or three weeks at the most. You'll come with me, won't you, Sharon? Japan? But... But how? Uh, this is such a surprise. I... I don't know, Peter. I certainly wasn't expecting this. What's the problem? A change will do us both good. What's keeping you here? You don't seem happy with your work. That's true. I wanted a change, but I certainly wasn't expecting this. This is so sudden. I'm completely confused. Hi, Anne. Mmm. What's that smell? What are you cooking? I'm cooking roast beef. Wow. I'm starving. You know, my sweet Anne, I was thinking about you today. About how you take care of Alice and me. You were fantastic. It's something I've been wanting to tell you for a long time. Come on, Jack. Stop it. Stop making fun of me. Oh, but it's true, Anne. <sighs> What's the matter? Why are you so nervous today? I know everything, Jack. I know all about you and Sharon. And what is it exactly that you know? That you had a relationship many years ago and that maybe you are still in love with her. And how did you find this out? I was tidying up in the living room the night of Peter's performance uh, when I saw your jacket and I was taking it to your room when something fell out it was a photo 
a very meaningful photo. You were kissing her. So I spoke to Sharon. And what did she say? She told me everything. Tell me the truth, Jack. Are you still in love with her? <laughs> well... I have to admit that seeing her makes me feel... But about me, Jack. I thought... Well, I thought there was something special between us. And there is, Anne. I care very much about you. But... 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 Well... I thought we were just friends. Oh. Okay, Jack. I understand now. Wait, Anne. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But it doesn't matter, Jack. Just remember, Sharon is going to Japan. Alice, is Anne at home? I just met the postman and this package is for her. No, she's not in now. My, what a large package. Please be careful. I think it contains fragile objects. Hey, Peter, do you know if it contains a set of porcelain plates that she won with the Sweet Biscuits bonus points? Well, I think so. At least that's where the package comes from. <laughs> All right, Alice. I have to go now. See you later. Anne will be so happy. She's been waiting for it for a long time. Bye. Hello, Anne. This is Alice. I've got great news for you. Your set of Chinese porcelain has arrived. They're beautiful. No, I opened it. I'm sorry, Anne. I just couldn't resist. <gasps> oh, no, Anne. I'm so sorry. It broke. Okay, okay. I'm not allowed to touch any more plates. You're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. Bye. Jack, be careful. Don't touch anything. This packet contains Anne's set of Chinese porcelain. I hope he didn't break anything. I already broke a plate. And guess who heard me breaking it? Anne. Oh, my. Mm. I didn't notice anything. Well, you should look where you are going. I'm, I'm sorry. What are we going to do? Well, let's get ready for Anne to lose her temper. Who knows? Maybe she'll forgive us. She can't get that angry. They're just plates. Remember, we can't cook. If Anne gets angry, we'll have to learn to cook. That's true. I've got an idea. 
Let's go get something from the local takeout place. Then we can pretend that we cooked dinner. She might be happy and forget about those plates. That's a great idea. Let's get going. You're holding. Hello, everyone. Listen. We need some rules in this house. Living together means obeying some rules. I've written this list of house rules that every person who spends time in this house must follow. No one is allowed to leave this living room until they read and memorize these rules. Bad day, huh? She's right, Jack. Anyway, and dear, what about these house rules? First of all, don't call me Anne, dear. Now listen. Rule number one: you must never, and I stress. Never open my post. Rule number two: From now on, clean the house at least once a week. Rule number three: We have to take turns washing up. Rule number four: Okay, okay, we understand. You must be angry. Well, yes, Jack. Very, very angry. I was really looking forward to getting that set of Chinese plates. I saved bonus points for a year eating the same stupid biscuits, which, for your information, I can't stand anymore. I just kept eating and buying them in order to get the set of Chinese porcelain, all for nothing. Oh, please forgive us, Anne. Just tell us where to go, and we'll buy you a new set. Well, that's not possible. They were handcrafted in Shanghai, and they cost a fortune. Okay, we'll do our best to make it up somehow. Now sit down, Anne. You must be exhausted. Jack and I made dinner for you. You don't have to do anything. We thought of everything. Really? What? You made dinner for me? Yes, Anne. It was the least we could do. Well, okay. I'll forgive you this time. But I warn both of you that I want more discipline in this house. You can't do. What you want all the time. We need some rules. Oh, don't roll your eyes while I'm speaking to you. Okay, okay, Anne. You're right. Rules are important, but it's also important to laugh a little. <laughs> oh, ha ha ha. <laughs> Hi, everybody. What's on TV? Jack, just a minute. It's almost finished. TV. So, what were you watching that was so engrossing? It was an extremely interesting documentary about Picasso's life. There were lots of details about some of his stranger habits. 
Did you know that Picasso preferred painting women with four eyes? No, I had no idea. And that he had lots of different types of dogs. He used to give only dogs to his friends. Strange, isn't it? And that he liked eating Italian cake at Christmas. <laughs> well, I also go crazy for Italian cake at Christmas, and my name isn't Picasso. By the way, where is our resident artist, Alice? She left early this morning. She said that she had something important to do. She wouldn't tell me what. But she did say it was none of my business. You know how she is. That's strange. She usually leaves late. Well, as a matter of fact, she was very serious this morning. She told me she had a headache, but I didn't believe her. Oh, look. But it's getting late. I'm starting to get worried. <laughs> Don't play mom, Anne. Alice is a big girl now. I know, I know. But it's just that but she didn't tell me she would be late. In fact, she asked me if I would be late today. Just a moment. A few days ago, Alice told me that she wanted to enter a painting contest. She said she thought it was her big chance. Maybe that's where she is today. Well, I mean, you're probably right. But it, it's almost midnight. I don't think contests last that long. <laughs> Why not? We all know that artists are a little crazy. Picasso was a perfect example. <laughs> That's true. You know something about being crazy, Jack, don't you? <laughs> Good morning, Alice. Where were you last night? We were getting worried. Good morning. I'd prefer not to talk about it. Why? What happened? Well, I took part in a young artist competition. I thought it would be the perfect occasion for me to show my talent. So? How did it go? You made a great impression, didn't you? Well, no. It went badly. They said that I wasn't cut out to be an artist. But the jury was made up of incompetence. Maybe no one appreciates my talent. Oh, come on, Alice, don't take it so badly. You know you are a genius, right? That's all that matters. Yes, just like Van Gogh, who, by the way, only became famous after he had died. Maybe that's my destiny. <laughs> Maybe you're exaggerating just a little bit. I mean, Van Gogh, but you don't really think you're in the same league, do you? And why not? No one appreciates my talent either. Anyway, I want your opinions. Wait just a moment while I get something. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here you go. This is the painting I took along yesterday. What do you think? Isn't it beautiful? It's... <clears throat> it's... Interesting. Um, it's a very, uh, a very unique painting. Yes, unique is the right word. Uh, Alice, you know I don't really understand art, don't you? 
What does it represent? That's the same question they asked me yesterday. <laughs> I can't believe that. It's so clear. It's a painting of a man and a woman walking hand in hand. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. um, well, the truth is, uh, it's a bit difficult to see. I mean, at first glance, it looks like a whole lot of mixed up colors. Come on, Jack. You just don't understand abstract art, do you? Well, now I understand that neither of you has any appreciation of fine art. <laughs> oh, artists! Never tell an artist what you really think. <laughs> For you. Oh, for me? Mm -hmm. I wonder who it's from. Oh, it's from Italy. Come on, Anne. Tell me who it is from. You know I'm dying of curiosity. It's from my sister, Kimberly. She says she's coming to visit me. And, well, she's arriving on Thursday. Today's Thursday. Oh, my God. It is. What? Oh, what? Now I, I have to tidy up and, 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 and do the shopping and uh, the house needs a good cleaning as well. Oh, slow down and calm down, Anne. We've got time. So, who is older, you or your sister? I am. And are you similar or different? Well, we're quite different. She's shorter than I am, and, and she's got blue eyes. Hey. What are you talking about? About Anne's sister, Kimberly. She's arriving this afternoon. Great. I can't wait to meet her. Is she as cute as you, Anne? <sighs> well, stop being silly, Jack. You're the biggest joker I know. <sighs> I have to get going now. Remember, don't leave the house in a mess. Is that all she thinks about when someone is coming? Cleaning, vacuuming, tidying up and dusting? Do you think Kimberly is worse than Anne? If so, we're going to have a lot of work to do. That's right. Two sisters means twice the work. <laughs> So, you must be Kimberly. It's a pleasure. I'm Jack. Hello, Jack. Anne has told me so much about you. Hi, I'm Alice. You live in Rome, don't you? So, how is life in Bella, Italy? Wonderful. My father raised me in America, though. But Italy is the most fascinating country in the world, as far as I'm concerned. It's history, the art, and, of course, the best food in the world. What else could anyone ask for? And, of course, the Italians are the most likable people in the world. You are 100% right. Just look at me. I'm originally from Bologna, which is one of the best cities in the world when it comes to eating well. I know Bologna well. It's a beautiful city, even if I do prefer Rome. Rome is much bigger and more exciting. So how does London compare? London isn't that bad. Apart from the weather, it certainly is much colder than in Italy. And the British are, well, how should I say this? They're less clever than the Italians. Watch yourself, Jack. Watch what you're saying. Yes. You know, Kimberly and I are both British. <laughs> well, I'm more British than she is. You're right. Well, I was talking about British men, of course. Kimberly, this is Peter and Sharon. 
They live in the apartment next door. It's a pleasure to meet you. So, Kimberly, Anne told us that you're attending art school in Rome. You know, I wanted to study art when I was a little girl. But in the end, I decided to study archaeology instead. That's interesting. And Peter, what do you do? I'm an actor. And I um, do a little singing. I'm acting in a musical at the moment. What a great career. Yes, but it's certainly less stressful than Jack's line of work. He works a lot harder than Peter. But actually, he's the hardest working person in the house. And I'm the person that has the most fun. Speaking of fun, what shall we do this evening? I would love to go out. It's been so long since I last came to London. Well, why don't we go to the cinema? Come on, Anne. That's so boring. Why don't we do something more exciting? I don't know. We could go to the pub and get something to eat. And, and after that, why don't we go to a disco? Wow, what a surprise. You two are completely different. Have you finished yet? Alice! No, Jack, I haven't finished my shower. Could you ask Anne to come in here, please? She's just left. Oh, come on, I'm pleading with you, Alice. I'm late. Okay, okay, I've finished. Calm down, the bathroom's all yours. Oh, finally, you've been in there for over an hour. Yes? Yes, this is Jack. No, I haven't seen John since yesterday. Why? Oh, the report. Uh, uh, yes. No, I haven't finished it yet. Yes, yes, I know it's important. Anyway, I've already started writing it. I, yes, yes, I'll send it to you as soon as it's finished. Excuse me? Listen, I'll call you later. Okay. Alice, if you don't open this door, I'm going to knock it down. Actually, it's Kimberly. I've just come in. Is everything okay, Jack? Yes. No, I, I've been waiting to use the bathroom for over an hour. I must get to the office. Okay, Jack. It's all yours. I'll use the bathroom later. Thanks, Kimberly. That's very kind of you. Sorry. Hey, Jack, have you seen my watch? I've probably left it in there. Oh. Here you go. Have you forgotten anything else? Ooh, we're rather nervous today, aren't we? Bye, I have to get going. Mm -hmm. <gasps> hey, Jack, wait! Jack, you're mobile! Oh, he's already gone. So, what are you doing today, Kimberly? <sighs> have you ever been to Portobello Market? No, I've never been there. Would you like to come along and browse around the stand? Oh, yes. It's been months since I last visited a flea market. <laughs> oh, hi, Jack. Oh, what's the matter? Well, you look awful. I'm a wreck. And I've lost my mobile. No. Alice told me you forgot it when you left the apartment this morning. That's where it is. I've looked everywhere. I must admit, I've been a little distracted lately. I guess I need some rest. You know, I haven't had a holiday since they transferred me to London. Oh. Okay, well, relax a little now. Kimberly is showing me some photos of a party they had at university last month. I've never seen such funny photos. Hey, this is a picture of the Faculty of Economics. 
I've been there for a seminar. Really? When did you attend that? Well, I was only there for four days, but it was really interesting. <laughs> hey guys, I've just got off the phone to Peter, and he wants to know if they can come over in a bit. He wants us to convince Sharon to move to Japan with him. She hasn't decided yet if she wants to go. To Japan? It's a great country. Have you ever been there? No. And to tell you the truth, I'm not really interested in going. Why do you say that, Jack? You're right, Kimberly. Japan is a fascinating country. I haven't been since 1995. Who knows what has changed since then? Do you mind if I go to my room? Today was awful. I'm dead tired and I haven't had anything to eat. Please tell Sharon and Peter. Please give Sharon and Peter my regards. I'm. I'm really not in the mood to chat this evening.